It's TGIF Friday, August 23rd, 2024. Your day with the podcast brought to you by ConverseCountyTourism.com. Beautiful landscapes, historic sites, and unique downtowns await visitors to Douglas and Glenrock, Wyoming. Plan your visit at ConverseCountyTourism.com. Well, the highlights, weakening monsoon, gusty winds, and this Pacific trough and storm system moving on in. The impacts are not going to be spread evenly across the Intermountain West and the Western High Plains. They usually aren't, and this is a good example of what's coming up this weekend. Hit and miss thunderstorms will be found through the region through Saturday and to some extent on Sunday. As subtropical moisture is still coming up, it's just not as intense and is going to be slowly fading away. The cooling trend west of the divide is on tap, but we're not going to get much cooling east of the divide this weekend. The trough is moving very, very slowly, so the cool air is going to stay on the western side of the divide. Then some of that will come over the mountains as we get into Monday. The contrast between low pressure in the west, high pressure in the central U.S. will cause gusty winds. Fire dangers sky high through the weekend, especially in the areas suffering the drought conditions. Now we still are looking at the stronger push of cooler air coming in mid to late next week. Unfortunately, I don't think that front mid to late next week is really going to be a big precipitation producer, but temperatures by the end of next week, just before the upcoming Labor Day weekend, are going to cool off a little bit. Photos coming in across the region from the showers and thunderstorms and lightning pictures here, big cumulonimbus clouds, and also down in Colorado Springs near the Air Force Academy there, some Moisture you can see in the air. This monsoonal moisture, especially in Colorado, southern Wyoming, Utah, down into Arizona, western New Mexico, is still going to be around in the coming days. With that monsoonal moisture around, we're going to continue to have great sunrises and sunsets with a little bit of color thrown in because of the smoke and haze across the region. Here's another great panoramic of that sunrise that many areas saw as we head on into the early morning hours of Wednesday across eastern Wyoming and most of the High Plains region going across the entire span of the horizon there. And when we take a look at the sunrise sunset opportunities through the weekend, we're going to have opportunities like this with Virga and the color in the air. The monsoonal moisture is still showing up here on the satellite photos. Coming up from the desert southwest, we have this little pocket of dry air coming into here. You can see the Pacific Northwest system coming on in. Another nocturnal thunderstorm pattern for parts of Nebraska and Kansas. That's two nights in a row there. Also, we talked earlier in the week about what's going on in the Pacific. We've got a hurricane here, a tropical storm here. The tropical storm right here and Hurricane Gilma will need to be watched here in the coming days, especially the tropical storm. It may become a hurricane as it passes just south of Hawaii, gets darn close to Hawaii as we go into this upcoming weekend, something to keep an eye on there. Taking a look at the 500 millibar pattern, we've got that low in the Pacific Northwest, the high in Texas and Oklahoma, and we're getting squeezed in this region between them. And that gradient in terms of the change in air pressure over distance through the rugged terrain, makes for some windy conditions. But that satellite photo I showed you, showing that subtropical moisture coming northward is going to lead to thunderstorms. This is where the thunderstorms are going to be today. This is where they're going to be tomorrow. And this is where they're going to be on Sunday. So you can see there's definitely a bias there for the southern areas. Arizona, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico to do the best. Thunderstorm activity really fades in the northern and western areas as that drier air comes on in. Now this activity here on Sunday is in advance of that Pacific trough trying to crawl over the Continental Divide. So hopefully maybe this could bring rain to northeastern Wyoming, but it's going to be close. It may end up mostly in Montana. But if you're going to be in the central and southern Rockies, still expect these afternoon and evening monsoonal thunderstorms drier conditions elsewhere. This is where the precipitation forecast is between now and Sunday. So you can see the monsoonal moisture down here, especially the Four Corners area, then the moisture in the Pacific Northwest and are going across the Northern Rockies. Where we would really like to see the rain, central and northeastern Wyoming, there are chances of scattered showers and thunderstorms, but really causing more harm than good, at least through Sunday. 
We'll take a look at what may happen on Monday as we get a little bit closer. Yesterday, we showed you the concern with winds. This is the wind gust forecast between now and 6 p.m. Sunday. So you can see the worst of the wind is actually Utah, Idaho, along Interstate 80 in Utah, across Nevada, also pretty windy in the wind corridor of the I-80 corridor of Wyoming into western Wyoming here. Northeastern Wyoming, winds are going to be gusty, although not as bad as areas to the west. But the whole region, because of that gradient between that low in the Pacific Northwest and the high in Texas, is going to make it windy. So if you're going to be out and about, especially along and west of the divide, closer to that trough, you're going to have the windy conditions. And this is one reason why fire dangers are going to be so high. And you can see the fire activity still going on. Now, some of these flames, the fires are out. But you can see where the smoke is as of very early this morning from the fire activity. Hopefully the smoke won't be as much of a factor today. Now let's talk about the situation in northeastern Wyoming. This is the latest drought monitor that came out this week. You can see the red there in the northeastern corner of Wyoming across western parts of Campbell County and the severe to extreme drought conditions in northeastern Wyoming. And this is the area that just really since, well, late spring, just has not been able to consistently get any moisture. While there have been areas in the West that have seen improvement over the last 60 days, that area hasn't, obviously. So the conditions were perfect. And as we mentioned yesterday, the very wet conditions that we had a year ago is actually causing problems now. Because let's put this in perspective, a year ago, there was no drought anywhere in Wyoming a year ago. This is how quickly things change. And that's why you can really never rest on your laurels. Even when we have abundant moisture years, like we did in 2023, things can turn on a dime. You may be saying, well, what happened? Well, what happened a from a year ago to now is La Nina happened. When you go into a La Nina pattern, the Western High Plains, the Western High Nights is susceptible to drought, to form. Now, thankfully, I don't think this La Nina is going to last past December, probably gone by January or February. So that's really good news for 2025. But on 2024, it came on. As you notice here, there's a bias of the wet is more east, the drier is more west. And that's going to happen in this pattern here. So if you feel picked on in northeastern Wyoming, I guess you should, because that's kind of ground zero where things really, really dried out quite a bit. As we get into Monday, the Pacific trough comes into the northern Rockies and the northern plains, pushes that high off to the east. This is where shower and thunderstorm activity is likely going to be common as that low goes across the northern Rockies. So Montana, North Dakota, you see northeastern Wyoming here is on the edge of it. Maybe late Sunday into Monday, there could be some rain chances in the fire areas, maybe. But you can see that at least the prediction is for the heavier moisture to go more to the east. Here are the temperature anomalies. By Sunday, you can see the cold air wants to be west of the divide. By Thursday of next week, there's the next trough. This will drag another cold front through the region. But it's going to be colder air more on the other side of the divide this time, east of the divide. And you can see this is where the colder temperatures are likely going to be. So it's showing the northern plains and northern Rockies by Thursday, that cooler anomaly settling on in. Unfortunately, we mentioned that these systems may not be terribly wet, especially the second system, because it really doesn't have any good connection to moisture. It's coming out of northwest Canada. And there's the dry air that we talked about suppressing the monsoonal moisture coming in during the second half of next week. So we could have a cool down but probably only light shower activity as it goes on through, at least for the central and southern Rockies. The closer you are to the Canadian border, the better the chances of moisture from that system. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see if things change there by the end of the week. But that'll be the next cool down as we get into Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday. On Monday, we'll start to take a look at that important Labor Day weekend. Have yourself a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday.